So you want to buy a 3D printer? Well, on today's show, I'm going to show you how to get the best printer for your budget. Stay tuned. Hey, welcome to The First Layer. I'm your host, Richard Cleveland, and on today's show, we are going to take you through getting your first printer. Now, you've probably heard all the great things about what a 3D printer can do for you and how it can make your 3D printing dreams come true. But there are some questions. Where do you buy one? Do I really need a 3D printer? What kind of support am I going to get? Well, these are all kinds of questions that we're going to answer for you. And what type of printer do you want to buy? We're going to answer all of these questions for you today uh, as we move forward. So stick with us. Hey, if you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button, hit that little bell, and you'll get notified when we've got brand new episodes uh, coming out. Uh, and if you'd like to support the show, the show is solely supported by you, the viewer, on Patreon. Although we do have one sponsor, that sponsor is allowing us to use the studio space that we're in. I want to give you full disclosure on that. There is no money exchanging hands, uh, but they do allow us to use uh, this facility uh, free of charge. So um, let's move forward. Question, should you buy a 3D printer? Well, if you're the type of person that is only kind of mildly interested in it, and you're not really sure if you should dive in all the way, or if you think that you're only going to have something to print occasionally, maybe you're not the right person for a 3D printer. But if it's something that you want to explore and get some more details about, what I would suggest is that you head over to your local fab lab or makerspace, and most places have one, just look them up. Um, and go in there and talk to some of the people that are using the 3D printers. Who knows, if you go to a makerspace, you might find another hobby that, that you're interested in. And that's what this show is all about. I mean, we're not just 3D printers, uh, although that's our primary focus. We are about makerspaces as well, and we're going to be exploring some of those as we go through Season 1. So, if you get to the point when you've looked at a 3D printer and you've looked at other people... 3D printing and you think that that's okay and you've got a lot of things that you want to print, you have some great ideas, maybe you want to buy printers to make your own little printer farm uh, so that you're making a home-based business out of it, printing uh, widgets and gadgets and other people's designs for them. That's also another reason that you might want to get into 3D printing. But what type of printer do you buy? You know, they're there currently are nine major 3D printing technologies out there in the world today. And as you probably don't want to buy a $500,000 machine, there's only really two that you're going to look at uh, as, a, as a desktop solution or a desktop manufacturing solution. And the first one is called FDM. And an FDM printer, I'm going to show you here right away. And the other is SLA. There are two very similar but yet different technologies. So we'll be right back with an FDM printer and we'll explain it all to you. So maybe you're looking for an FDM printer. What is an FDM printer? Well, it is a printer that extrudes molten plastic or thermoplastic down onto the heat bed and builds a model layer at a time. This is an example right here of, of plastic in the form in which you get it in. You get it in sort of a, a string or a cord style. Um, this is what we call filament, not to be mistaken with the filament that you may be using for fishing. Can't use that in here. But uh, there are ther certain thermoplastics that you can use with most FDM printers. And how it works is your, your plastic string goes in through the top and is run through the motor section down into a heat block. And you can probably see it better here. It runs down into the heat block. And what the heat block does is it melts that thermoplastic and then through the uh, action of the motor working and bringing more plastic in, it extrudes it out through the nozzle. 
and there's many different sizes of nozzles, but we're not going to go into that today. We just want to explain to you what the two, or I just want to explain to you what the two different types of FDM printers are and what you might be looking for. This particular one is a kit made by any cubic and uh, it comes in pieces. You put it together and we're going to talk more about kits and pre-built uh, systems later on down the road. Um, they both typically work the same. In this, in the case of a Delta printer like this, the head moves on these three arms. So it's X, Y, and Z actions are all happening right here. And then it comes down onto the plate. It starts to build up your model so you have a model finished. In this case, the X, which is this gantry here, moves back and forth, left and right. Your Y moves front to back. And your uh, Z action moves up and down, okay? Now, is it a good idea to get an FDM printer? Absolutely it is. If you're getting into printing for the first time, this is the most cost-effective way of starting your desktop manufacturing. Because they're reliable. Most companies uh, deliver quite quickly. Um, you can get support from most companies. There are some exceptions to that rule. Now, you're not going to get the greatest support from other companies. Uh, particularly if you buy um, what we like to refer to as a cheap clone. Um, if you buy one of these cheap clones, whether it be from an overseas uh, distributor or not, or you may buy one locally from your local retailer, be aware that they do come with some added uh, deficiencies. Some of them don't have very good manuals that come with them. This one, the Anycubic, happens to come with a really good manual. It's all written in English. It's got tons of pictures uh, to show you how to put it together. It walks you through using the software, talks to you about using um, how to put the, the extruder on, which is this section right here. Behind this fan is your extruder and your heating block. Um, so look for a company that other people are using. Do some research online. There's a lot of different um, companies available that have very good reputations. And no matter which FDM printer you choose, if you decide to go that way, they are going to last a fairly long time. There is some maintenance that have to be done on them, however, but they will last you a long time. Most of them will come with a display. Uh, you can see there's a display on the bottom of this one as well. So most of them are going to have some sort of display that you can interact with the printer, whether that's to move the axis back and forth, up and down, uh, do your bed leveling, that sort of thing. Deltas and Cartesian machines differ in the fact that this build plate doesn't move. It is stationary all the time, so it's a little more difficult to get this tuned properly and the bed leveled properly than it is to get a Cartesian machine done. In the background, we have a custom-built um, Prusa i3. Uh, it's all made off the latest Prusa STLs, and that I built myself based on just looking online and getting the parts uh, overseas. It took me a while to source all my parts, but that is another way that you can get into 3D printing is by sourcing all your parts and building it yourself. You can buy ready-built machines, you can buy kits, and we'll go into a little bit more about kits a little bit later. Next, I want to talk about SLA and what is SLA. Be right back. All right, so you might be interested in SLA that we talked about just before we went uh, from the FDM printers. Now, SLA is a different technology. Um, what it uses is it works by exposing a layer of photosensitive liquid resin, which is this stuff here that you can get in bottles, uh, to a UV laser beam. So basically what it's doing is it's dropping down into the tank, it's taking a laser and it's drawing out exactly what you want in terms of the model that you're building. 
and it builds it up layer by layer, much like an FDM printer in the respect that it does a layer by layer by layer. Um, but the, the big difference is that this is resin as opposed to a thermal plastic. Now, the resin, when it's done, when your model's done, you have to do a couple of things. You either have to harden it with a chemical or you have to put it under a UV light of some sort to cure, to go through a curing process. So your, your models aren't quite ready when they come off of the build plate, which is this right here. Thing that you see right here, that's the build plate. And all SLA printers all come with some sort of UV protection. Because what you don't want is direct light hitting into the resin bath because if that should happen, you're going to ruin your print. You'll have a, have a uh, harder time, um, you know, getting your prints right. And if you have failed prints here, it's a really, really messy job to clean it up because you are dealing with resin as opposed to thermal plastics. Now, these machines also are more expensive than your standard FDM printers. These can run anywhere from $3,000 up to $10,000, depending on the, on the company in which you go with. But this is definitely, if you are a business, SLA printing might be something for you. Typically, you're gonna have a much smaller build area on, on SLA printers. You're not gonna get quite the volume you can get out of FDM, but you're gonna end up with a much smoother finished print in the end after you go through some of the other steps. So if you want to buy a 3D printer in 2017, there's a lot of options to choose from. And the two that I've showed you today are the most popular, FDM and SLA. Well, there you go, FDM or SLA, which is right for you? Well, I'll tell you what, it all depends on your budget and you can get an FDM printer kit for $300 or under you can get uh, SLA starting at about $700. And uh, if you want to get into a kit that, or not a kit, but a printer that's already built, you can start in at around the $500 range, which is not too terribly bad at all. Now, some of the things that you can do with your 3D printer, once you have it, it's not all for just making little tchotchkes like you see behind me, but you can do useful things as well. You can make new parts for your printer. If you're an artist and you have no place to store your paints, well, you can make paint caddies, which will definitely uh, help you store your paints. If you want to make toys, you make toys like this little Mario, who was printed in many different colors, um, all not all at the same time, but in separate prints. And of course, he looks just gorgeous. A little bit of paint, and away you go. And then if you're into sci-fi, well, you can do things like the Terminator. And finally, my friend over here, Batman. I'm a huge Batman fan, and when I saw this online, I could not resist buying the STL. Um, and the STL is the file that you need to use to slice, uh, and we'll talk about that up in, in a later show when we talk about the software that you need to use with your 3D printer. But uh, this is done by, uh, sculpted by Malix3designs.com, uh, so go and check them out, give them a little love. We're holding a contest real quick, and I'll tell you a little bit about that. So the contest that we're holding, it's to help us reach 250 subscribers. This is our first episode. We'll be releasing episodes every Wednesday, starting in the month of October. Uh, so today is episode number one. Uh, I want to thank our, our partner, and that is Spool3D.ca. Print it right with Spool3D.ca. They've got everything that you need from aftermarket parts, filaments and printers and they're they've got great service as well so check them out online spool3d.ca print it right so now let's talk about the contest when we reach 250 subscribers here on youtube and 250 likes then we are going to give away uh, a nice little prize and it's going to start off with my friend ray from star wars the force awakens this is the vinyl bobblehead from Disney, uh, StarWars.com, and it's from the film, The Force Awakens. So if you are a fan of Star Wars and you don't have this one in your collection, you may want to get it. Uh, we're also going to be giving away a print, which I want to open up here for you, of the Enterprise 
which um, was from the first J.J. Abrams movie, and it's a very nice print, got a really nice paper. Um, so we're going to give one of those away in part of the package. And finally, Spool 3D is going to give you a $50 gift certificate to spend any way you like on the Spool3D.ca website. So here's how you enter. What you have to do is subscribe to the YouTube channel, like us on Facebook. We're going to take all the names uh, when we reach 250 subscribers. We're going to put them into a random draw. We're going to draw the name randomly live on one of our live streams. And then we'll tell you how to get in touch with us. We are launching the website for um, the first layer coming up uh, real soon. It should be launched within the next day or two. We were hoping to have it launched today, but things uh, just didn't work out. So we got a little bit of tweaking yet to do before we launch the website. But for now, please like us on Facebook, hit that notification button and get notified when new episodes are, go up. And also like us on Facebook and uh, we'll put all those links down in the description below along with the rules for the contest and how you can get stuff from spool3d.ca. Until next time, friends, we will see you and keep printing.